start the meditation with thoughts of goodwill, because that's our motivation for being here. We want to find a happiness that's reliable. We want to find a happiness that harms no one. And that kind of happiness has to be found inside. The happiness that comes from things outside always involves taking something from someone else. But the happiness that comes from within doesn't take anything away from anyone at all. In fact, it depends on your developing your internal resources. And the more you can develop them, the more you have to share with others. So it's good to start with that thought. So that when the mind focuses on the breath and part of it wants to wander off, you can remind it. Where are you going? Are you looking for a genuine happiness or are you just looking for an ice cream cone, a piece of candy? Something gives pleasure in the immediate present but doesn't really help you in the long term and sometimes can actually harm you. That gives you more impetus to come back. To look at the breath, because that is the next step. Take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths, and notice where you feel the breathing. Focus your attention there, because often it will be in some place you might not expect, because the breath is not just air coming in and out of the lungs. It's a flow of energy in the body. It exists on many levels, and the most obvious is the one that allows air to come in and out of the nose. So wherever it seems most blatant, most obvious, focus your attention there. Then ask yourself, does it feel comfortable? Could it feel more comfortable? You can experiment, try right? breathing deep down into the abdomen. Or even further, think of the breath going all the way down to your feet. Try heavier breathing or shorter, faster, slower. Just see what kind of breathing feels good right now, because you want to give the mind a place to settle in the present moment, and the more comfortable that place is, the easier it will be to settle and to stay there. You're giving the mind some rest, but at the same time you're giving it exercise, because to stay here while you're alert requires that you be mindful. I mean, it's one thing to sit here and basically doze off, but that it doesn't accomplish anything. You want to be alert. You want to know what you're doing. That means you have to keep reminding yourself. You don't want to stay here, stay with the breath. That's what mindfulness means. It's a quality of the memory, your faculty of the memory that you apply at the present moment. Right now it's reminding you, stay here, stay here. Then you're alert to what you're doing. You're alert to how the breath feels, and you're alert to what the mind is doing. Is it staying with the breath, or is it getting ready to move off? If you realize that it's moved off, then you bring it right back. That's a quality called ardency. In other words, you try to do this well. You realize that the mind needs to be trained, and this is how you do it. It's one thing to read about concentration and read about wisdom and discernment, decide that they're nice things, but to actually know them in the mind. That requires that you train the mind. In the same way you train an animal so it can live in your house. Sometimes you have to be gentle with it, sometimes you have to be firm. Making the breath comfortable is a way of being gentle with the mind. Because if it feels satisfying, it feels really gratifying to breathe in, breathe in deeply, breathe in a way that gives energy to the whole torso, that loosens up any patterns of tension. That's really inviting. It feels good to stay here. 
and you can remind yourself that this is good for the body, getting things aired out like this, allowing the energy to flow smoothly throughout the body. Now, the firm part is when you find that the mind has started to wander off. You have to remind it you're here to train the mind, not, not to just let it wander as it likes. There is, there is that temptation. Here you are with the whole hour with your eyes closed. No one else is watching your mind right now. You can do anything you want. And it's very easy to daydream in situations like this, but you say, no, I want to do something new, something different. Get the mind under control. Because if your mind is not under control, it can create a lot of damage. If it is under control, it can take difficult situations and actually make them good. So this is your most important treasure right here, the quality of your mind. So you want to look after it well. And by keeping it with the breath, you've got it anchored in the present moment, so it can watch itself. Because you can't really watch the mind as it's in worlds of the past or the future, unless you have an anchor in the present moment to, to pull yourself out, at least some, somewhat, from those worlds. So you can realize, oh, I should be here, not back home or off in some vacation land. I want to be right here. That's what the present moment is all about. This is where you are, right here. And the mind that churns out thoughts of the past and the future, it churns them out right here. If you stay with the breath, you get to see the process. In the beginning, it's very easy to fall into these thought worlds. But as you keep pulling yourself out, pulling yourself out, and you get quicker and quicker at it, you begin to see the machinations of the mind as it's creating a little world for you to go into. And you realize that each time you go into a world like that, part of the mind is making a choice. It says, yes, let's go for that, and it jumps right in. You can change that choice. You begin to see that the mind is not a singular thing. It's more like a committee or a whole, whole corporation, a factory of lots of workers, lots of executives, making decisions and doing things, and sometimes without the people in the top office knowing what's going on. This is why the top office has to come down and look inside. Otherwise, the corporation starts churning out junk, basically. That's going to bring the corporation down. You want to have make sure your factory is creating good things. In other words, the part of the mind that is shaping the present moment, you want to shape it well. So I have to bring some awareness to what's going on right now. And you begin to realize there are lots of different voices in there, lots of different opinions in the mind. There are parts of the mind that would like to think about home or think about a vacation land. And you want to catch them as they subvert your, your main decision, which is to be here and to learn about the mind in the present. Unfortunately, as the mind does get more still, gets more centered, you can notice these voices more clearly, catch them in time. This is how you get more control over the mind, because the mind can spin out all kinds of thoughts. And often they're fairly innocent. Let's say when illness comes, or aging comes, or death or separation comes, the mind can spin out some really destructive thoughts. And if you don't have some way of keeping it under control, you can create a lot of unnecessary suffering for yourself, and then it spills out into, for other people. So here's your chance to get some insight into how the mind spins out those thoughts, this factory that you've got here. Make sure that it's producing only things that are really useful, things of quality. Because we tend to overlook the extent to which 
our experience of our lives. It really does depend on what we're doing. We're not just passive recipients. It's not the case that everything that we know comes from outside, because we create a lot of our own attitudes from the inside about how to interpret what, what we're experiencing and what to do with it, what meaning we can make out of it. All of this has to do with our own activities. And if we do all this kind of stuff in ignorance, who knows what's going to come out? But if we bring some awareness to it, we can actually bring some order to it and take this mind of ours, which is so good at creating suffering for itself, and turn it around so it creates well-being. And it's a type of well-being that harms no one at all. And the more you have, the more it's going to spill over and help other people. So if part of the mind is saying, well, this is selfish, just focusing on your breath right now, you say, nope, that's not the case. You're taking care of business. The business is looking at how you shape your experience and learning how to shape it in a better way. And we start with the breath and our mindfulness around the breath and our alertness and our ardency to shape something new and better in the present moment, a state of concentration where the mind feels centered and stable with a sense of well-being. Feels really at home here. So keep this in mind that we're, we're here for genuine happiness. And the breath is going to be our gathering point to keep us anchored in the present moment so that we can understand what the mind is doing to cause suffering and what it could do to create happiness. Years back, I was at a commemoration for John Lee's passing, and they'd invited a monk from Bangkok to give a talk to close the ceremonies. And the time arrived when he was supposed to get up in the Dharma seat, and he wasn't there yet. And we got a phone call from him saying that he was stuck in traffic and asking that they invite someone else to give the talk instead. So they invited another John, a monk from the forest. And he got up and he talked about how the Buddhist teachings were all about suffering. finished the talk, and then after he'd finished, not long afterwards, the, the original monk arrived, and so they invited him up to give another talk. And not having heard the first talk, he gets up and he says, the Buddhist teachings are all about happiness. And the thing is, both of them are right. The purpose is happiness. It's not, it's not the purpose to cause suffering. The purpose is to help us create happiness. And to find a happiness that lies even deeper, that doesn't have to be created. But to find that happiness, to develop the path to that happiness, we have to understand suffering. And that means we have to understand what our minds are doing right now to create suffering. Because that's the suffering that weighs the mind down. The pains that come in from outside, the misfortunes out there in the world, they don't have to make us suffer. It's what we do as we find out about them and we deal with them. That's where the suffering comes that weighs us down. And so we understand this process well, then we don't have to suffer that way. So these are some of the things we can learn and master as we get more and more focused on the breath. So start exploring. There's an awful lot here.